Brothers and sisters, welcome today to the Liturgy of the Word. Today is the 34th weekday of Ordinary Times. And so let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw an angel come down from heaven with great authority given to him. The earth was lit up with his glory. At the top of his voice he shouted, Babylon has fallen, Babylon the great has fallen, and has become the haunt of devils, and a lodging for every foul spirit and dirty loathsome bird. Then a powerful angel picked up a boulder like a great millstone, and as he hurled it into the sea, he said, That is how the great city of Babylon is going to be hurled down, never to be seen again. Never again in you, Babylon, will be heard the song of harpists and minstrels, the music of flute and trumpet. Never again will craftsmen of every skill be found, or the sound of the mill be heard. Never again will shine the light of the lamp. Never again will be heard the voices of bridegroom and bride. Your traders were the princes of the earth. All the nations were under your spell. After this, I seemed to hear the great sound of a huge crowd in heaven singing, Alleluia! Victory and glory and power to our God. He judges fairly, he punishes justly, and he has condemned the famous prostitute who corrupted the earth with a fornication. He has avenged his servants that she killed. They sang again, Alleluia! The smoke of her will go up forever and ever. The angel said, Write this. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, All the things you have written are true messages from God. The Word of the Lord. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him, singing for joy. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Know that He, the Lord, is God. He made us. We belong to Him. We are His people, the sheep of His flock. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Go within His gates, giving thanks. Enter His courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to Him and bless His name. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Indeed, how good is the Lord! Eternal His merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Happy are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Alleluia, Alleluia! Stay awake and stand ready, because you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke.
Jesus said to his disciples, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you must realize that she will soon be laid desolate. Then those in Judea must escape to the mountains, those inside the city must leave it, and those in country districts must not take refuge in it. For this is the time of vengeance, when all that scripture says must be fulfilled. Alas, for those with child or with babies at the breast, and those days come. For great misery will descend on the land and wrath on this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive to every pagan country. And Jerusalem will be trampled down by pagans until the age of the pagans is completely over. There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars. On earth, nations in agony, Bewildered by the clamour of the ocean and its waves, men dying of fear as they await what menaces the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to begin with this saying of Jesus. Stand erect and lift up your heads, for your liberation is near at hand. This command by Jesus to stand erect and lift up our heads will never sit easy for any one of us here simply because we are constantly bombarded by messages and chastisements and negative happenings in the world today through the social media. And this can further add to the anxieties and uncertainties that we are already experiencing, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has already turned our predictable and comfortable lives upside down as we need to find ways as to how to work with the new norm put into place. Further, the latest crisis to hit the Catholic Church was the release of the 445-page report by Vatican on the former Cardinal Theodore Mackerich, a notorious abuser who resigned over the sexual abuse incidents. This will not only have impact in the churches in, in the United States, but also the churches throughout the world. Question, how do we come to terms with this real turmoil, confusion and challenges happening around us and not feel a sense of fear and paralysis within our hearts? On a human level, such violence, cosmic upheavals, calamities, disasters and scandals can certainly shake our hearts and make us feel discouraged. Just like in the case of the Jews, the temple in Jerusalem represented the most sacred place for the Jews where God dwelt amongst his people. And in their minds, the temple was seen as indestructible. However, their pride and unbelief caused the city to be sacked in time to come and the temple was destroyed in AD 70 because they did not recognize the visitation of God in the person of Jesus as the Anointed One or the Messiah. As such, we are called to stay faithful and look forward with hope because God is in control and will have the final word. Simply put, as people of faith on this pilgrim journey, we believe that our God will be with us to the end of times. Further, Jesus promised to ease our fears during such challenging times and tribulations, but we need to anchor ourselves in an intimate way to the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us so that we are able to ride through the ongoing worldly and personal storms. Our lives have to be geared towards looking forward to the day when we can stand erect and lift up our heads 
to welcome the risen Lord, who will come with power and glory to redeem us. This will be an extraordinary time of our lives where we come as God's beloved to the wedding feast of the Lamb, the mother of all celebrations, dressed in our wedding garments. This garment will reflect our faithfulness to Christ in the midst of tribulations and challenges faced, just like the five wise virgins who remain vigilant with lighter lamps. None of us knows when the end times will come, and while we live in the in-between times, we are called to share the hope as people of the resurrection with those around us. Let us always open ourselves to the promptings of the Holy Spirit to help us in this pilgrim journey and understand God's will for us as we prepare to see our Lord face to face in time to come. Amen. As people of the resurrection, looking forward to the second coming of our Lord, let us pray in the wonderful prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and your family members, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.